I'm Batman. Well, I hardly think so. The real Cape Crusader calls his crime-fighting cohorts when he's running late. Well, I had to walk. I couldn't get Raj on the back of my scooter. I said this before and I'll say it again. Aquaman sucks. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to The Geek End, right here on Tactics. We appreciate you being with us, and actually, it's just going to be me this evening because my friends weren't able to join on and, and do anything this week, do any recording. One of them got really sick, and so, by the way, it's not the Kung Flu. He's okay. It was just a, a little thing that lasted a couple of days. I mean, I guess, theoretically, it could be the Kung Flu, and he just got a pretty mild case of it, but... We don't know that for sure. He's fine. His family's fine. None of them are sick. But it did keep him from being able to record because he lost his voice. Our original plan was to talk about a new game that we have all been playing at the same time called Animal Crossing New Horizon. For those of you that aren't aware, it's become quite an internet sensation. It's all over Twitter. It's all over Twitch. People watching the live streams of people playing. And if you're unfamiliar with the Animal Crossing series, suffice it to say that the really big thing that kind of glues the whole game together is that in all of the Animal Crossing games, there is a character named Tom Nook. And because Tom Nook is the person that owns the store and is in charge of helping you upgrade your house, so he's basically the landlord of the town as well, a lot of people have accused him of being a capitalist. And there's a lot of different people that have been doing this, but I really wanted to ask the question, is that true? Is this something that they have done? And, and usually they're trying to paint it in a negative light. They're trying to paint him in a negative light and, and calling him a capitalist as some kind of slur or something to be afraid of. Of course, you know, if you watch my regular show on tactics, I'm a big C capitalist. I really believe in the free market. But really, that's not the point of why we're here tonight. I'm not here to speak to the moral quality of Tom Nook. And frankly, as a video game char character, I actually like him. I know a lot of people have an issue with him, but I've always kind of liked Tom Nook. I like his design. I like his personality. I've never really had any issues with him. So I don't really have a dog in this fight as far as wanting him to be either a capitalist or a communist. Let's go ahead and look at this. These are some memes that have cropped up around the internet. Of course, you can see pot shots that they'll take both at Tom Nook and capitalism as a whole. You'll notice that this is a running joke. Honest trailers ran with it. Some of the big video game commentators have also made the joke, and it's all harmless. It's all in good fun. I'm not trying to go after any of these people. There are some more serious articles, and, and some of them I think are a little bit tongue-in-cheek. Some of them I think are actually kind of freakishly serious, but you can look at some of these articles from all over the place, Culture Vultures, SB Nation, Vice News, Junkie. Some of these are done to be funny. Some of them are actually freakishly serious, and, and this tends to happen whenever you're dealing with social justice warrior types, is they feel as though every cause ought to be something that is super serious and passionate, and even if there's something that offends somebody, we need to go ahead and disavow it right away. So I think that's the minority, though. I think most people are just kind of goofing off with this, but here's the thing that I want to make clear. Whether or not Tom Nook is a communist or a capitalist will make very little difference in how much I enjoy the game Animal Crossing New Horizons. I've already had a lot of fun with it. I was playing it for like two hours earlier today. My friends are all playing it at the same time, which, I mean, the timing couldn't be better. The fact that we're all in quarantine and aren't able to go out and socialize and do things, and the game Animal Crossing is basically just that stuff, and the fact that it came out right as everybody started to start self-quarantining, I mean, the timing, Nintendo just could not have possibly lucked up and gotten the timing for this game any better. So I think that it's been a fantastic breath of fresh air, considering that we're not getting a whole lot of fresh air right now since we're all sort of cooped up in our houses. But I really enjoy the game, and regardless of whether or not I think a game is more capitalist or communist, or, or whether I think its political leanings align with mine, I can really enjoy it. You've seen that already on the Geek End, we've done segments about Pokemon, and Pokemon's about as communist as it gets. I mean, think about it. 
all of the health care is free and a coat costs you $300. Like, that's about as communist as you can get. It's like we're living in Michael Bloomberg's imagination. I'm really not pulling for one side or the other. I was just reading through my communist manifesto and said, you know, that's the thing. I know because I'm a, I'm a nerd. I read through the communist manifesto when I'm in quarantine and have nothing better to do. And I got to thinking, I was like, man, there are a lot of things in here that actually describe Tom Nook. So what we're going to do is we're going to take both of these economic philosophies and go through each of them and, and some of their core beliefs and ask the question, is Tom Nook actually a communist or a capitalist? Is he more of the, the Chicago-style Milton Freeman School of Economics, or is he a lot more on the Karl Marx and, and sort of modern monetary theory, everything else? Where does he line up on that political scale? Well, I think we need to take a look at both. So is Tom Nook a capitalist? Let's go ahead and look at the evidence that would suggest that Nook is indeed a capitalist. Well, first of all, one of the core understandings of what it means to be a capitalist economy is that profit motive is there. In other words, the thing that motivates people to do work, to be productive, is the idea that they will be able to profit from it and that they will be able to enhance their own personal wealth and gain more by being motivated to work by the profit they can potentially bring in by accomplishing that work. Well, I mean, when you look at Tom Nook, you'd have to say that he fits the bill on that one. I think that that's totally fair, because he does offer goods and services, but for a price. He does have things in his store that you can buy, and, and those things are priced based on the perceived value of them, not just, well, you need a couch, okay, here's a couch. Well, you need some fruit, here's some fruit. Like that, that's Actually, Tom Nook doesn't even sell fruit in his store, but the point is, all of the things in his store are priced appropriately. Some things are very expensive, some things are not. And another thing, too, especially in the earlier games, you don't really see that much in New Horizon, but in earlier Animal Crossing games, you would have to work for Tom Nook for a little while at the beginning. He also hopes to cultivate the island in New Horizons and pays you to do so by doing certain things and, and paying you for your labor. It's in a roundabout way. You're not his direct employee, but the point is he does believe in a profit motive. The fact that you can purchase something from his store and he will buy it back from you, but at a discounted price, that also means that there is a value there. He has to, just like the, uh, the guy on Pawn Stars, he has to worry about, okay, can I sell it? He does seem to run a meritocracy, and that's another thing that would be primarily a feature of capitalism. That instead of giving to people or distributing to people by means of them merely existing, he does believe that there needs to be some kind of merit there. That the person that works the hardest, the person that catches the most, most fish or gathers the most fruit or brings in the most goods that have been crafted that person is rewarded for his or her labor and the value of the product in which they bring in. You bring in less fish, you don't get paid the same as the guy that brought in a lot of fish. So that is a feature of capitalism. That would make us believe and, and suggest that your own fiscal responsibility and your own ability to produce products that people want does play into the, number, uh, the amount of money that you can make off of Tom Nook. Another thing, and we've already touched on this a little bit, market-based prices. Now, this is somewhat on bigger display inside the stock market, really because it's a video game and we, we have to have a certain level of understanding that it's a simulation. We understand that there are such things as market prices, but when you look at something like the turnip market or something like the hot item of the day, which is a newer feature in New Horizons, you have to understand that there are certain things that become more or less expensive depending on what time you try to sell them. Now, again, obviously it's a simulation. You're not actually looking at market forces outside of your little village to determine what the prices of those things actually are. But the point is that since prices do seem to fluctuate and the perceived value isn't something that's like set by the government or something, we can reasonably believe that Animal Crossing operates off of a market-based system. Therefore, we could say that Tom Nook, at least in this sense, since he does buy and sell things based on market price, definitely a point in him being a capitalist. 
economic liberty. This is another big one because essentially if you have economic liberty, all that means is people are more or less free to buy what they want. So instead of getting government-issued food, government-issued clothing, government-issued housing, instead of the government giving certain things to people, the market is just out there and you can purchase whatever you want. You may not want to purchase certain things. You may really want to purchase some things that other people wouldn't. That's what economic liberty is. You are free to choose where you spend your money, in other words, your resources, in order to purchase products. That is a feature of capitalism. Tom Nook definitely has that. He doesn't force you to buy things from his store. He doesn't compel people to purchase things. But he does have them available for you, and, and you can spend however much or however little of your money on either his store or other things in the economy of Animal Crossing that you would like. Therefore, you could say that Animal Crossing is actually pretty economically free. And another thing that I wanted to bring out, and these are things that are in-game, he actually explains in Wild World that a feature of Tom Nook's personality is that he genuinely wants to teach people to be able to get out of debt. This is something that many ardent capitalists in history have been very much a proponent of. They like the fact that debt is, is something that you are able to go into, but they say it should also be something that you understand is going to be an investment and you have to have a plan to pay that off. Overall, people that are economists that are big capitalists tend to not like debt. And so this is another thing that might point to Tom Nook actually being a capitalist. And another thing, too, is personal responsibility. This, of course, would be a feature, sort of an Ayn Rand libertarian view of capitalism and how you're supposed to oversee your own assets and resources. The producer of Animal Crossing New Horizons, Hisashi Nogami, and this is an interview that he did with The Verge. So you can see this quote coming up right here. For Nogami, Nook isn't necessarily greedy. Instead, he believes the character's money-centric nature is a sign of responsibility. He's an adult, he says, so he's very careful with money. More important, according to Nogami, is that Nook's existence is the backbone of the entire Animal Crossing experience. If players didn't have those huge loans to pay off, they wouldn't spend so much time fishing, catching bugs, and doing other things to earn cash. It's one of the biggest motivations users have to continue playing Animal Crossing, and Tom Nook is the man behind that motivation, he explains. What we see in this quote are two different aspects of capitalism. First of all, in the tail end that we saw something we've already gone over, which is profit motive. In other words, you are motivated to do things inside the game to gain a profit. But the one that we're looking at right now really comes from the first half where he says, He's an adult, therefore he has money-centric nature because he's a very frugal, responsible person. Well, this is something that would you would expect to describe in capitalist. And so you can see that there's pretty decent evidence for Tom Nook being a capitalist. However, I do think that there's quite a bit of evidence that would suggest that Tom Nook is also a communist. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that he is both of these things at the same time, but I'm saying you could look at some of the evidence and suggest that Tom Nook is indeed not a capitalist, instead he is a communist. So what we'll do is we'll go through the Communist Manifesto, look at some of the planks of communism, some of the core beliefs of communists, going right back to the source with Karl Marx, and determine whether or not he is a communist. So let's go ahead and look at one of the pillars of communism. Pillar number one. Abolition of private property in land and application of all rents of land to public purpose. Well, there's a couple ways we could look at this and readily see that Tom Nook does kind of fall into this category. The land outside home seems to be community property. You'll notice instead of selling people, whether it's you or whether it's villagers' homes, it is not that he sells you a plot of land. He basically sells you a home. And it's almost like the land isn't even really yours, because if they are to move your home or move somebody else's home, they move the house, which basically belongs to you. But the land that formerly occupied isn't yours anymore, and the land that your house resides on now, I guess it kind of is, but it's almost like the land is owned by Tom Nook, the entire island is owned by Tom Nook, 
and the houses, whether or not they're really your property is kind of up for debate. But the point is, even if you do own your house, it's almost like you, you don't actually own the land that it's sitting upon. That's a very communist idea when you consider that the very first pillar of communism is that you don't own your land. The state owns your land. You may be able to reside on it, but ultimately it's not yours. And pretty much everything outside the threshold of your own door is community property. Let's look at pillar number two. A heavy progressive or graduated income tax. You notice how the price of your home loan goes up every single time you make an upgrade, despite the fact that sometimes the rooms are exactly the same price as they were beforehand. Now, granted, when you're talking about a basement or talking about a second story, it's understandable that those things are priced a little different. Because again, I know it's a simulation, but if we are imagining this happening in the real world, you can understand how construction crews would have to work a little harder to add a room on top of your house or below your house, as opposed to adding a side room. However, the upgrades that you get when you go from a one room to a two room and add that side room or a back room or a room to the other side, those loans are all substantially more expensive than adding the first one, even though the rooms are exactly the same size. The only logical explanation here is that there is some kind of wealth fee or wealth tax on having a bigger home. There's really no other explanation that makes sense. And so the idea that there are taxes and government fees priced into the cost of expanding your home would lead us to believe that Tom Nook is, in fact, a communist who is taxing people that are richer, more affluent, and able to afford a larger house. And that's the way that they do it, that when they build the house larger than it was before, they're specifically increasing the cost, not because the construction costs more, but because the government is taking more of your money in fees. Another aspect of this would be, have you noticed that you're pretty much the only one that pays for all the infrastructure? Because if you tried to build a ramp or a bridge in Animal Crossing New Horizons, you'll very quickly notice that you're bearing almost all the cost of that. If you build, for example, a 200,000 bell bridge and your neighbors might contribute maybe three, 400 bells a day, well, what normally happens is that you wind up just paying for the bridge yourself. And so the richest person in town, the most affluent person in town, is the one that is paying for just about all of the infrastructure, which is normally thought of as being a government responsibility. Almost the entirety of the amount is being paid for by the richest person in town. This is what would be considered a very heavily progressive tax. Let's look at plank number five. Centralization of credit in the hands of the state by means of a national bank with state capital and an exclusive monopoly. Hmm. Well, that's interesting because all credit is handled by Tom Nook. All of it. It's handled by Tom Nook and it goes through City Hall, which Tom Nook resides in. And he seems to be in control of all that. He handles all the line of credit. And so Tom Nook, the government, is indeed the one that holds all of the credit, all of the debt in this particular game. And so you could look at that and, and very quickly be able to tell that the only bank in town owned by Tom Nook and him being the government, well, that essentially means that the government does own all the banks and all the line of credit. And another piece of evidence that might lead to this too, have you ever noticed that there is no specific time where you have to pay back all of those loans, and there's also no interest on any of those loans. That's certainly not the behavior of a capitalist. That sounds much more like something that would happen if you were a communist. Let's look at plank number six. Centralization of the means of communication and transportation in the hands of the state. Hmm. Communication and transportation. Well, that's interesting. Who gives you your cell phone? And what is that cell phone called? A Nook phone. So, 
Tom Nook, who, again, resides in City Hall, is in charge of all of the government, all of the infrastructure, the only government in town, as it were, is also in charge of all communication on the island. Well, there is actually also broadcasting. Oh, wait a second. Who runs that? Tom Nook. Now, Isabel may be the one actually saying it after Tom Nook passes that duty down to her, but Tom Nook's still the one that started it. He's the one that put together all of the equipment, and so the broadcast system on the island is also run by Tom Nook, who is the government in this game. And so yet again, we're seeing evidence that Tom Nook is a communist. And when it comes to transportation, it's unclear whether Dodo Airlines, the only way to get on or off your island or really to anywhere else, it's unclear whether or not that is something that Tom Nook actually owns or he just has some kind of partnership. But even if it is a, even if it's not a government owned transportation system, it's certainly one that has a government sanctioned monopoly over all transportation on the island. So even if it does happen to be a private company partnership, it's definitely one that has the blessing of and is supported exclusively without any other transportation competitors being involved. It certainly seems as though it is a service that is run by the government, and even if it isn't, having one company handle all that, one with the sanction of the local government, that would definitely be something that is more indicative of communism than capitalism. Let's look at pillar number seven. Extension of factories and instruments of production owned by the state, the bringing into cultivation of wastelands, and the improvement of the soil generally in accordance with a common plan. Let's see, how does the game start? With us being taken to a deserted island. A wasteland, as it were. And why are we being brought to this wasteland? So the government, Tom Nook, can encourage us to cultivate and build it. Well, that's interesting. Seems to fit right along with number seven of the pillars of communism. Improving the land accordance to a common plan. Remember that Tom Nook is the one that sort of encourages you to do all these things, whether it's uh, developing a fishing industry, getting rid of all the weeds, sorting out the trees and organizing them. All of these things are something that is done specifically at the behest of Tom Nook. Granted, he doesn't have any kind of schedule, he doesn't force you into slave labor or anything, but it's certainly a master plan by Tom Nook, and remember that one of your primary objectives in the game is to do this so that you can get the reward later on in the game in the form of a K.K. Slider concert. All of these things are done according to a master plan orchestrated by none other than Tom Nook. One more piece of evidence that he is indeed a communist. And then we have pillar number nine. A combination of agriculture with manufacturing industries, gradual abolition of the distinction between town and country by a more equitable distribution of the population over the country. Now, remember what we just talked about with Tom Nook having this big master plan, which all kinds to kinds of comes to a culmination in the form of a, again, government sponsored concert for the villagers. Do you remember that one of the parts of that that Tom Nook essentially forces you to do before that can take place and before you win the game, as it were, as much as anybody can win an Animal Crossing game. The way that he does that is essentially that he tries to get you to distribute villagers all over the island. He wants you to go forth and civilize the wasteland, remember the last plank that we just looked at, pillar number seven, and he wants you to do so and distribute the population over there and sort of decrease this distinction between town and country. And also, when it comes to all of the industry in town, sort of centralize it and it all goes through him and his store and the government. And so this is one thing that's really funny. It would actually seem, based on this, and especially with trying to limit the distinction between town and country, that Tom Nook is indeed a communist. Now, that's six out of the ten pillars of communism. Think about that. 
It seems to me that the evidence is pretty clearly on the side of Tom Nook being a communist. But you also need to remember this as well. He owns the only store in town, which, by the way, is named after him and is run by his kids. Now, we do know that they're not blood relatives, but although I say that, that's what the game claims. They certainly seem to have a pretty strong family resemblance, and even their names are similar especially when you consider that they have the same last name. Again, it doesn't make any sense, but regardless, that's who it is. The people that are closest to Tom Nook are the ones that have an exclusive monopoly over a store that is effectively owned by the mayor, the government of that town. That sounds far more like communism than capitalism. That's not even close to free market. And it's also got a little nepotism worked in there as well. He also engages in social engineering programs with the Nook Miles program. Now, this isn't something you'll find in the Communist Manifesto, but it is something that you will find in communists that have attempted it all throughout history. The most recent sort of example that we could use was Project Dragonfly, which was started by the Chinese government. And what they did was they installed on people's phones a social credit score. And the way that you got points for this social credit store was doing things that the government wanted you to do. You know, kind of like on the game, how you pick weeds and get Nook Miles, or you cultivate the land and get Nook Miles, you plant fruit trees. All of these things are things that are designed to change a society's behavior, and they did it through people's phones in China. They're doing exactly the same thing here with the Nook Miles program. That's a pretty strong case to be made that Tom Nook is someone who engages in social engineering just like other communist dictators. Now, I know that a lot of people are going to try to rebut this by saying, Caleb, Tom Nook has to be a capitalist because Tom Nook really, really, really likes money. Well, that's certainly true. We even looked at a quote from the game's producer who was talking about Tom Nook being a very money-centric character. But here's the thing. The idea that liking money or acquiring a lot of money automatically disqualifies you from being a communist, that's not something that bears out if you look through human history. Let's take a look at a few of the most famous communist dictators and how much money that they had acquired. Hugo Chavez, for example, the dictator that brought socialism to Venezuela, he was not somebody that you would necessarily consider uber-rich when elected. But when he died, he was worth at least over $1 billion, possibly up to two based on different estimations. Then you have Fidel Castro, the dictator and communist revolutionary of Cuba. He claimed to live in a fisherman's hut, but it was actually a luxurious vacation home on acres and acres of exclusive beachfront property that he kept to himself. This is all according to his former bodyguard, Juan Ronaldo. He also owned a, a 90-foot yacht, which was built out of imported wood. Forbes also reported that he was probably worth about $900 million at the time of his death. So to say that Fidel Castro was a very, very wealthy communist would be an understatement. Joseph Stalin, of course, the famous dictator of the USSR, it's true that he had very little what we would call personal wealth in the traditional sense, but he did have complete control of state funds and was able to use the government and those funds to do pretty much whatever he wanted. And so, since there were no checks and balances over him, there were really no limits to his power. If he wanted to spend money on something for himself, he certainly could. And so while he may not have had any money in the bank account, basically every dollar that was in the coffers of the USSR was at his disposal for any reason that he wanted to spend it. And so by that standard, you could say he's one of the wealthiest people in human history. Remember that he lived in a state-owned building and ate state food that was prepared for him by state employees. And remember that he also had the state pay all of his expenses, whether it was travel or whatever else. Transportation, all of that was provided for him by the generous taxpayers of the USSR. And if you consider that everything in the USSR was at his disposal, 
that would make him worth anywhere between $300 billion and $7.5 trillion adjusted for today's money. There's no question that Joseph Stalin was an incredibly wealthy individual, arguably the most wealthy, one of the most wealthy that has ever existed. And you'd also, keep in mind, have similar figures for Chairman Mao of China, because Mao Zedong basically had the same deal with the Chinese government. And let's look at Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders, of course, a self-proclaimed socialist and senator from Vermont who recently ran to be president, he is worth somewhere between $2 million and $2.5 million, according to both Forbes and Politico. And among the most extravagant excesses that he has, he has one home in Burlington, Vermont, which is valued at $405,000. One home in D.C. he also owns, which is valued at $489,000. And then finally, a third home, not too far north of his home in Vermont, which is priced at about $575,000. So Bernie Sanders ain't hurting for money either. You better believe he's not going to be one of the ones in a bread line. And so the reason that I bring all this up is just to say, if acquiring a wealth automatically makes you a capitalist, you would have to make the argument that Castro, Chavez, Sanders, and Stalin are all capitalists, which you obviously cannot do. They're some of the biggest examples of communist slash socialist in human history. And so saying, well, Tom Nook likes money and has nice things makes him a capitalist. Sorry, that argument really doesn't go anywhere. So, the big question at the end of all this is, is our fuzzy little trash panda actually a communist or a capitalist? Well, there is some evidence to suggest that he's a capitalist, and and like a lot of people, I think that he, I don't think that you could say that he was fully one or the other, but if you're looking at the evidence and everything that we've seen here tonight, I think that you would have to admit that the evidence overwhelmingly leans to Tom Nook being more of a communist than a capitalist. And let's also keep in mind that this is not something that Nintendo, where the game is produced in Japan, would necessarily see as a bad thing or a good thing. They would likely have no moral qualms about it one way or the other. Roughly 10 to 12 percent of Japan's people belong to the Communist Party. This is not something that is incredibly rare in their country, and by that I don't mean like we have in America where we have some people that identify themselves as communist or socialist within the Democrat Party. I mean there is actually a communist party in Japan which consists of about 10-12% to of voting Japanese citizens. So they certainly wouldn't have any qualms or think it controversial to include a communist character. Did they design it that way on purpose? Yeah, probably not. It's a video game, which means that they designed the video game to be as fun as humanly possible and didn't really care about the political leanings of their character. However, it seems to me that if you're looking at the evidence and looking at the classical understanding of what it means to be a capitalist or a communist, Tom Nook definitely leans pretty hard to the communist side. That's all I've got for this week. Thank you for joining us here on The Geek End. Continue to play Animal Crossing and enjoy it. Believe me, I'm going to do the same. We'll see you later. Stay the course, friends. Ever wonder where Superman gets his incredible powers? Some people say it's the yellow sun of Earth, but I think it's because he subscribes to this channel and likes my videos. Now, I'm not saying that if you subscribe to my channel, you'll necessarily wake up tomorrow as a super strong, nearly invincible alien, but it definitely doesn't hurt your chances.